isometric view. In this video, we will learn how to construct an isometric view using orthographic projections. This is our ninth video on the topic. These are the orthographic projection of the object. To construct the isometric view or 3D view of the object, we first need to create the isometric axis. To do this, take a ruler and draw a horizontal line. Then, mark a center point on this line. Next, take a protractor and mark 30 degrees on both sides of the center point, as well as 90 degrees. Draw lines passing through these points from the center point. The line passing through the 30 degree mark will be the X axis, the line passing through the 90 degree mark will be the Y axis, and the remaining line will be the Z axis. With these three isometric axes in place, we can now construct the isometric view of the object. Next, we need to decide whether to draw the front view in the XY plane or the YZ plane. It's important to remember that the front view should only be drawn in these two planes, and never in the XZ plane. The top view of the object is always drawn in the XZ plane, so that's another key point to keep in mind. In this video, we will be utilizing the first angle method to solve the problem. The figure on top is the front view, and the figure on the bottom is the top view of the object. Let's begin the drawing process by creating the base of the figure. From the top view, we can see that the base has a width of 50 mm and a length of 62 mm. Additionally, there is a notch at the front edge of the base. The notch is positioned 22 mm away from the side of the object and has a depth of 9 mm, as shown in the top view. To determine the width of the notch, we can subtract the 22 mm distance from the total distance, which is 31 mm. This results in 9 mm, representing the half width of the notch. Since the notch is centered, the other half width will also be 9 mm. Now that we have all the necessary dimensions for the base, we can start drawing it. Let's begin drawing the base of the figure. Use a drafter to create a rectangle with dimensions 62 mm in length and 50 mm in width. This rectangle forms the outline of the base. Now, let's add the notch. To do this, mark a point exactly in the middle of this side of the rectangle, which will be 31 mm from the edge. Next, Mark points 9 mm away from this middle point on both sides. These points determine the total width of the notch. To find the depth of the notch, mark a point 9 mm from the middle point parallel to the Z axis. Now that we have the three points, join them to complete the outline of the base with the notch. To increase the thickness of the base, refer to the front view where the thickness is given as 16 mm. Draw vertical lines from each edge of the outline. Finally, connect the endpoints of these vertical lines to complete the base in three-dimensional form. For clarity, remove all non-visible lines. Next, we can see there are dotted lines in the top view and the front view, indicating a slot in this base. The slot has a width of 18 mm in the top view, and is exactly in the middle of the base. Additionally, the depth of the slot is given as 9 mm in the front view. To create the slot, mark a point 16 mm away from any side along the z-axis. Next. Mark another point 18 mm away from the previously marked point. This gives us the total width of the slot. To get the depth, draw a vertical line of 9 mm from these two points using a drafter. Finally, join the endpoints of these vertical lines to complete the base. In the end, add the detailing for the slot as shown. This completes the base for our given isometric views. Next, we need to draw the top portion of the object. From the top view, we can see there are two parts. One is this wall having a notch, and the second is these two side inclined walls. Let's construct each one by one. We will first construct this vertical wall on the base. From the top view, 
we can see that this wall extends from end to end of the base, which means it has a length of 62 mm and a thickness of 20 mm. From the top view, you can see the height of this vertical portion, which is given as 26 mm. With these dimensions, we can construct the outline for the vertical line. Mark a point, 20 mm away from this corner point. After this, draw a line from this point parallel to the x-axis. Next, to increase the height of the vertical portion, draw the vertical lines of 26 mm length from each corner point of this rectangle as shown. In the end, join the end points of these vertical lines to complete the outline for the portion. Remove the non-visible lines for clarity. This is the outline for the vertical portion. We can see there is a notch of width of 30 mm and a depth of 15 mm, and it is exactly in the middle of the vertical portion. Let's construct the notch. Using a drafter, mark a point at a distance of 31 mm from the side. Next, mark points 15 mm away from either side of this point. These two points give the width of the notch. To get the depth of the notch, draw a downward vertical line of 15 mm from this middle point. Joining these three points will give us the notch. Now, to give thickness to the notch, draw 20 mm lines, parallel to the z-axis from these three points. Join the endpoints of these lines to fully complete the construction of the notch. This completes the vertical portion of the object. In the end, we need to draw the two end walls. We can see that the thickness of these walls is 9 mm. Therefore, mark the points 9 mm away from both sides of the object on the vertical portion. Similarly, mark the points 9 mm away from the ends of the base as shown. In the end, Join these points with lines to complete the side inclined walls. This completes the isometric view for the given orthographic projections. Lastly, add dimensioning to the isometric view to represent the width, length, and height of the object. This completes the isometric view for the given orthographic projections. This is the final required isometric view. I hope this tutorial helped to understand how to construct the isometric view of an object from its orthographic projections. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the like button. And if you're new to my channel ADTW study, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all my latest videos.